Okay, everybody. Um, I think my mic just got turned on there. Um, first of all, welcome. Um, let me just make sure all the technics is uh, working. Um, I'm not sure I need to present myself. I think my name is mentioned here somewhere in this uh, presentation room. My name is Lars. I am the owner of Photograph Fits. Um, and next to me, I have a, a good friend and IT guru, and he's not a dive buddy, actually, but he is, he's probably going to be this summer, Sovos. Exactly. Thanks. He's here as well. Thank you. Thank you for helping me out with this uh, webinar. It's a lot of techniques when, uh, when a system like this has to uh, go online. We packed it with some interesting stuff as well for you to see. And um, I'm not sure I could have done it myself, so thank you, Sophos, and I, Sophos, and I, I'm pretty sure you can hear what I'm saying too. He's sitting next to me. He's my wingman. That's great. Listen, you can all see my website right now. I think, um, I think at least there it is. Uh, I would like to welcome you to this first webinar by Photograph It. Uh, we've really been looking forward to doing this. It's something we've been talking about for a very long time. Um, a lot of you might not know this, but uh, we have a common friend called Steve Severinsen, who is uh, is very he's very into uh, both underwater freediving. Well, it's not underwater, but it's freediving and online stuff. And actually, he just got back from America a couple of months ago, and uh, we sat down and talked about the strategy for online stuff. And uh, he told us to do this, and he said you got to go on this uh, webinar because it's a great way of getting out. And uh, what I've been doing the last couple, of maybe five years, is to travel around Scandinavia and all over other European countries to do talks. And very rarely we can gather a lot of underwater photographers, but this way uh, we can get a lot of you at the same time and doing something really, really interesting. So let me stop this uh, website. I'm pretty sure that we've seen it now. And let's see if we can find an image of me. Uh, I turn it on. Should be coming out just now. Bear with me. Oh, there we are. Hey, hello everybody. Uh, let's see if we got the chat function on again. So you can actually write me. Oh. <laughs> it's all great. Okay. According to this uh, poll, there should be a lot of you sitting out there now watching this. Uh, thanks for doing that. And. Um, Shortly, I'm going to welcome Steve Stasic, who uh, is the main guest speaker here today. Uh, but let me first introduce uh, myself and my business. Uh, I'm selling underwater photography um, gadgets, uh, housings, lights, and stuff. It's what, what I do for a living. But on top of that, I do a lot of uh, TV projects, um, pictures, go out and do, do actually interesting uh, tasks uh, professionally. I try to get a time to do uh, everything because I really like going out and do these professional um, tasks, uh, jobs, um, but I also need to take care of my office here and send out stuff when you order it. Um, anyway, so that's why it's great for me to do this webinar here so I don't have to spend two days going to Sweden and uh, talking to just a small amount of people, but can sit here and talk to a lot of you. Um, when I was uh, thinking about doing this webinar, I thought about who to, how to start it, which uh, subjects should I choose, because there's so many subjects uh, that we can actually do. And I thought, why not do something that um, I know will be for everybody, regardless where you are. Uh, I mean, where you are, on what level of photography, if you're into video or photo. Um, and I got to think that uh, I had once done a very successful seminar were invited a, a photographer in called Steve Stasi, um, and he completely, as you've probably seen in, this, in the introduction, he swept the feet away from, from all of us. Uh, Steve is, uh, is able to say some of the things that I've been thinking, and uh, since I did this introduction, I actually started thinking about why is it that this is special? Why, why is that it's important for a guy like Steve to come in and, and tell us some of the things from his part of you know, the photography world? And I realized that um, I realized. Prob I started thinking about where does underwater photography come from. And uh, when I started 25 years ago, I got an Iconos as my first camera. I think it's almost 25 years ago now. Um, we had 36 exposures. Uh, if you really pushed it uh, the way you loaded the film, you could have 37, 37 and a half. 
Um, it wasn't very light sensitive. The light we brought was shit, um, was not very good. And um, we, um, we, uh, the pictures, honestly, they weren't particularly good. I mean, it took many years for me to do something properly, and I was even a commercial photographer, and I thought I was going to nail it the minute I got a camera underwater, but oh no. It took me some time until some years later, I went on a around the world trip, and I worked on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia for some six, seven months, and every day I took a couple of films, and they were developed, and you know, the traditional happy snappy for, uh, that we do for the tourists, and we were able to dive every day and do underwater shots of, of the divers. And when I got back to shore, they'd already been developed because we put them on the plane back, and uh, that way I got to see all the images I shot every day, and there was a great learning curve, a learning process. And today, this is uh, something everybody takes for granted because the, even the small cameras are so much more life sensitive. Uh, anyway, I'm getting out of the path here. Uh, the point being, at that time, it was really tricky to do proper underwater photography. And uh, there was only a few people that were really good at it. And they were good at it because they had time to develop their photography, test stuff, and everything had to be in the same place every time because if you move too much, your setup would root, and after trip to Egypt, 25 films, you would be completely lost if your setup was different from what you were used to. So people weren't used to playing with, with the photography. It was better to play it safe. Um, now it's different. Now we have digital uh, imaging, uh, but somehow, underwater, as, since underwater photography is not a commercial art form, nobody really, I mean, very few makes a living to doing underwater photography. So nobody has really been able to uh, to develop this professionally, and that means that the good photographers are a syndrome of the people they were taught by, and they were taught by the people who played it safe. So what you can see is that the learning curve and the learning process in underwater photography has actually been developing from people who weren't really used to playing with the with the um, with the camera underwater because then you wouldn't get any images. And even though it's changing a lot, I still see a lot of people um, handling underwater in one very specific way. It's like, it's, and there's a lot of the old ones left, even people older than me, who are everybody who's doing competitions and stuff. I'm not trying to get on anybody's neck. But it seems as if the way to look at underwater photography is still very traditional. It's, it's as this is how an underwater photography is is supposed to be. And it's like the stuff that I knew from the professional photography world where we had artists, we had commercial studio photographers, we had so many different kinds of photographers who took their skill and their creativity and put that into the photography and no one really were able to do that in underwater photography. I do see some excellent underwater photographers out there that I really admire a lot, but when I saw and heard the presentation from Steve Stassi five, six years ago, I was I was so inspired because I thought I saw that is exactly that's the route that somebody needs to look into. And I saw that all the traditional photographers who were there also really liked the idea. Maybe they didn't take it in and thought that's what we have to do, but they got some great ideas, and that's what I'm hoping you're going to get tonight, some good ideas of how to look at the approach of photography and uh, maybe develop your own photography. Okay? See, Facebook is a great, uh, is, uh, <laughs> it's a great toy. It's uh, good for me. That's where I do all my, uh, I have to, I have a double screen, just so you know that I'm not actually looking at somebody else. It's my, it's my control board here, and Sophos is on this side, so I'm just finding an image for you here. Um, um, whoops, let's see if I can remove that. Still, bear with me, all the new techniques. Um, five, six years ago, I realized that uh, this guy that I've known for 25 years as one of the masters of untraditional photography had become a diver, and I, 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 I couldn't, he didn't have a picture of himself on his, on his face book profile so he um, <laughs> I saw this image I saw this image and um, I hope you can see it all can you see it so close okay it's there it's a dye mask and the guy had this as his profile picture and I thought that is not 
that's weird. And I recognized the name, and I thought, there's something here. Um, I, I, I knew this was a diver. I knew it must be a photographer, because nobody would do a picture like this. And uh, I realized that it was done in, uh, can I, sorry, uh, Sophos is signaling I should get it up in big format here. Am I better? OK, great. Um, let's see if I can I need to hide Sophos here. You don't want to see him. OK, and uh, I thought, I need to figure out who that is. And I re recognized the name, and I thought, it didn't compute. A guy like I knew from years back in underwater photography it didn't make sense. But I realized the picture was taken on Gulen because Facebook told me, and I thought, Gulen, I know some people in Gulen, and I realized this was Ian's old mask. So uh, let me remove that again. And uh, we became friends. And not a lot of time later, uh, I was approached by this guy, and he said, OK. Uh, he didn't know me, of course, and he said, I realize you're selling underwater cameras, housings. Can you help me with some good stuff? Because I really want to develop this, and I, um, we, 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 I think we became friends. Um, let's see if I can now uh, introduce you. Find uh, the guy that it's all about, Steve. Um, I can hear him, and turning on his camera. He's sitting at home. He's sitting 300 kilometers away from here. We set all this up, and if I press this one, there he is, <laughs> with, with, some, with some great, uh, with some great uh, gog, um, earphones on, and so is signaling me again. I, I took it off deliberately, just so you know. And here's Steve. And um, hey, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Okay, I need yep. to shut up. Okay. So uh, Sophos is, it's, it's never mind, never mind. Sorry about that. So there you are. I'm happy that we get you online. Good, thank you. Thanks, thank you to your son for setting all the techniques up. It's great. <laughs> it's great. I'll, I'll tell him that I'm really pleased with that. Listen, thanks for uh, joining this webinar. I really appreciate that. And um, I hope that uh, you will uh, enlighten us with some of the stuff that you do tonight. I will uh, try and keep up with some good images here. Yep. Um, so I will take care of the techniques on that. Could you uh, do me a favor and just tell us a little bit about where you are from uh, photography-wise? Um, yeah. Where, where did you come from? Where, when did you start taking pictures and all that? But this, somehow images or image making have, has always interested me. So after high school, I, I started like drawing, painting at different art schools, and I wasn't very talented. I, <laughs> I sucked at it. But after a couple of years, I kind of stumbled accidentally over photography, and that process was much more for me to work with. Uh, it was still image making, but there was both uh, like a social part of it. There was a technical part that I could like feel and understand. Uh, and this process about working intuitively and, and very quick compared to what I used to do when I was painting or drawing, suddenly I could make an image in uh, less than a second, which hmm would have taken me two months before. <laughs> so that, that was, uh, yeah. I yeah, just, okay. When I, what, I knew that that was my path. That was my face somehow. Because when I heard of you the first time, I was still a young guy in photo school, and you were part of a group called 2nd of May, and yep. you did some, uh, some uh, interesting shots. Maybe I should show some of the pictures from that time. Or and and then maybe meanwhile you can tell us about what they are. Um, should yeah. be one up here. Yeah, my great luck was that when I started in the agency, uh, the Soviet Union, Mr. Gorbachev, he like kind of opened the door a little bit, so it was possible to get to to get to work there, not totally free, but it was possible to go there and and. and Stuff. So. 
and and I just remember this picture from all the newspapers, mm. and I think it was all over the photo school as well. Somebody had taken an, an image like this. What was this uh, group you participated in? Why were you all, why were you only doing black and white pictures? Yeah, but that was for commercial reasons. At at that time, uh, I think ninety five percent of our assignments were it was black and white. It was of course shot on film, so. It was expensive for the magazines and the newspapers to, to reproduce color images, so it was only for like fancy magazines that we worked on color. And, uh, yeah. Well, there was a lot of images from that time. I have uh, others. Um, if I can get them to show somehow, doing this and this. Uh, I've got too many screens. Uh, yeah, and here, boom. Here it is. It's the same guy, isn't it? Yeah, but I will just do this. I can then. <laughs> here we go. I yeah. think I got it. Yeah, that's still one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah, from Moscow in the uh, yeah, late ni late 1980s, uh, and I think it's it's oh, it's quite a good example of, about uh, how I work. That I kind of look up uh, the areas, my hunting scenes, and and go there, and uh, like uh, I get like inspired by by. Uh, the surroundings, by the textures, by uh, so so that makes me some kind of alert. Uh, so I don't I don't have like a predefined image that there's some kind of ideal that I'm looking for. But this environment, these old Soviet textures, were so yeah fantastic to work with as a photographer. As we we cynically say that what's bad for people is uh, it's very often good for photography. But I had this uh, opportunity to have Moscow and the Soviet Union as my hunting area in the late 80s and the beginning of the 90s. I remember this image also from the news and from some exhibitions earlier. It's really powerful. Yeah, yeah that's a strange story. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think this is the last of the images I have here from. Uh, yeah, there was actually a new one that showed up. I've just scanned all my old Soviet stuff hmm. recently. So. Okay, so uh, I guess what everybody here is uh, wondering about is uh, why the <laughs> beep are you in uh, in underwater photography? But then yeah. you sent me these <laughs> images, and um, I I I saw this image among the the, the pictures that you sent us. Um, boom, here, this one here. Yeah, that's a funny one. It's, mm -hmm. uh, the, it's the only autograph I've ever asked for in my whole life. That's uh, Albert Falco, who was uh, Cousteau's chief uh, dive, uh, chief photographer. And uh, I met a French diver who knew him a little bit, and I said, well, Please ask him if you meet him if I could have his autograph because when I was a kid I saw all those Cousteau films and uh, yeah that's Cousteau it's a, an image I, I downloaded and printed for for an early exhibition. Hmm. So I I grew so, up in the 60s where you still had these guys who was like exploring the world uh, heroes like. <laughs> Great one here. Yeah, that's one I've picked from uh, from Cousteau's uh, Silent World film from the middle of the 50s, where I think they had, had, had a little, little mm. different attitude at that time to what was what the sea was. Yeah. Okay, so um, you were actually drawn into. Um, let me stop this one for a second. So you were drawn into diving even before you started diving, or or 
why why were you fascinated by Cousteau so early? Because you only started dying a couple of years ago, as far as I remember. You started dying because your son had yeah, a dive course, right? I, I, I promised my son that instead of getting his like confirmation, then he could pick some place and on the world map and we could go there together as like a kind of father and son thing. And then uh, one day the stupid guy came home and said he wanted to go to Egypt and dive. <laughs> and I just looked at him and said, what the fuck are you saying? I, I, I could hardly swim and uh, okay. I never had this idea about diving. But uh, that was his dream. So. Uh, he got his license through his school, and I joined the local dive club and tried to to survive and <laughs> get my first certificate. So yeah. So you started diving not for taking pictures, but for diving. Oh, no, yeah, 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 I, yeah, hmm. yeah. More like ha having this project together with my son. That was very nice. Hmm. So. so when I when I. <laughs> When I saw your images you sent me, I realized I saw one of these shots, and um, you told me that's the shot that started it all. Mm. So um, here it comes. Very special yeah. picture. <laughs> it's a strange one, yeah. It's just it's fragments of seaweed like curling around in the waves. And uh, it was we were snorkeling at, uh, at Mallorca during this, our summer holiday and I, I had bought this little camera for my son so he could uh, take those pictures of, of the fish and stuff. Uh, I, I didn't have any intentions at all about uh, uh, making underwater photography because uh, the trips we had been on, I, I understood that all success about diving was to see like a turtle or a shark or and I think well it was always nice to see them, but I didn't feel like that I could create my own stories out of uh, those animals. So then one day we, we were like snorkeling, and uh, and I just got these amounts of seaweed in my head, and it was like just like a, a painting that was like trying to yeah, creep into my dive mask into myself and so I took the camera from my son and I played around for like an hour and uh, I made a couple of hundreds of those uh, <laughs> fragments of seaweeds and not, it's not because uh, I think still think it's uh, one of my absolute best pictures but but it just gave me this idea that there was something else out there than what Cousteau had tried to tell me all these years. That uh, not that he had been lying to me, but <laughs> but that there was something different that I could work with. Something where I could maybe try to tell my own stories, like like I usually try to when I uh, work above the sea on ground. No. So so that was the image that actually yeah. thought it all. And the day after that one I called you and asked for a better house. Yeah. Okay. Well lucky me. Yeah. Thank you. We have seaweed. Okay. Hmm. So you didn't expect to start taking pictures, but you ended up doing it anyway. Yeah. And what you saw fascinated you enough to to, to actually go and purchase a large camera system. Yeah, but then I think the, the next Im important step was like uh, when I was working in the Soviet Union, I had this, you know, as a hunting ground because of the textures, because of the people, uh, the, the clothes, they inspired me. Uh, it was like diving into a, a time capsule over there. Then um, I could like instantly feel that uh, that I had to start going north to find my <laughs> my uh, my right. hunting scenes to get to get away from all those colorful fish and corals and stuff because they were like telling their own stories. I could not f find ways to like uh, 
break Cousteau down, to break the beauty down. To, uh, it was like predefined uh, all that beauty. That I could not like take a, take a set off in 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 that world and like create my own stories. So gradually, I started to work like more and more in the Nordic countries, in Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Faroe Islands, uh, places like that. Because you had an idea that in these countries there were less? Yeah, I, I have a st very stupid idea inside myself that I somehow can feel my cultural inheritance. Uh, I've, I'm in better contact with myself. It's not like uh, going on a safari where I look at things. Uh, when I go north, I just I'm Nordic. I become part of things. It's my it's my hood hmm. <laughs> somehow. Yeah, and then you went to Iceland. Yeah, I've been a lot in Iceland. Yeah, yeah. And there we saw, and then you started taking pictures of. I'm going to show a couple of other pictures now. Yeah, that's uh, from Northern Iceland. Yeah. Little Owl. Yeah. What, what is this? I mean, is that a picture of, uh, is that a dive picture? What you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a very shallow place. It's, a, it's like in between diving and snorkeling. I think the deepest point there is maybe three meters or something. It's a very strange place in Iceland where they have like 19, 20 degrees warm water all year round. And then you did this shot. Is this a good dive shot for you? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Somehow. Maybe I should tell the viewers that we're now getting into the section of pictures that will be in your um, exhibition that starts here on Friday. Not Thursday, uh, but I said, but Friday. These two ones are actually not part of the exhibition. These two are not part of the exhibition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, okay. Uh, Why? Why are they not? Part because of the they don't fit in the concept. Uh, the exhibition. I'm trying, like I was telling, I'm trying to like <clears throat> make a little story about a non-existing expedition, uh, like from my childhood heroes like uh, I've, uh, yeah I made a starting point from Jules Verne's old uh, journey to the center of the earth yeah so this is this is inspired by that no these are not in the ex exhibition ah sorry yeah of course <laughs> yeah. they're from another yeah, well, well um one of the things you and I have been discussing many times is, you know, the classic one is, I often go out teaching or making presentations and I often start out with challenging people about the fact, what is a photography? What is a picture? Mm. How do you see it? How do you, where can you feel a picture? Where can you, where do you see a picture with your eyes or with your stomach? Um, what is a picture for you? Yeah, but that's what I try to explain that when I like found out that photography was like my media, uh, it was because I could work uh, very quickly, very intuitively. I, I, as I say, I, when I work with my own stuff, when I'm not on assignment, then I choose my uh, my hunting areas of course where I think I will get inspiration to to yeah to, to come in a state where yeah I, I get into a kind of a state sometimes where I'm insecure where I'm not I don't know what's going to happen uh, the next second what how, how the reality combines itself and, and sometimes when I succeed these things combine themselves uh, more or less in the instant 
the second where I push the trigger, and uh, and that's uh, yeah, that's like the moments where I feel very happy when I I have this idea that I have revealed something from reality that works in a different way in photo in a in an image than I had expected. So, so while, when I dive uh, or when I go out, I I try to like clean uh, the blackboard, I mm. clear my mind, not to expect anything, because if I like expect uh, something in advance, then uh, I will kind of start looking for that and like 99 or. 100% of the times you will get disappointed because that's not what, what's, especially when you're diving, even if you're diving the same place a hundred times, they will look different, the visibility. So when 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 you, when you called me the first time and asked for underwater camera housing stuff, and I, um, first of all, you were very specific about which lens and it had to be sharp and no softness and, and we had to test a lot of stuff. And I started to get into light and I wanted to sell you some light too because you wanted to dive in the Nordic area. Mm. But but you didn't want light. I mean, light is... I mean, I later realized that you don't work with light. Yeah. You know, any diver would know that it gets dark on the water. Any diver who takes pictures would know that either you need a camera that has a very light sensitive sensor or you need to bring light. Light is the essence of an image. Um, why did you? Why do you not want light? But there's lots of light down there. It's just another color. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that uh, it comes back to the same thing again. That's uh, because I work uh, the way I work. I work uh, fast. I work uh, very much on intuition. Uh, photography has never been like a technical discipline for me. If I have too many buttons uh, to, to adjust, and, and then I start thinking, and if I start thinking, then uh, my images uh, becomes much too well organized, and I think them through, and they get boring. You so, like this? This so, but summer. but then, but then, uh, I've just, of course, I experienced that when I go down, the the colors disappears and all that stuff, uh, and I just started thinking, why well, why why don't you try to work with that instead of fighting it? And I think in a lot of uh, the underwater photography, I see uh, people like try to to remove the water, fight the water, fight uh, uh, this uh, it's this color absorption phenomena that water can produce. So for but me it was like, uh, yeah, I think it, it was interesting to try to work with it to, instead of fight it. I want to I show some pictures now from some more pictures from Iceland uh, that may be shows what you mean. No. Let me hear what you think. Uh, is that true? No one here. What is true? Sorry, does that relate to the nut light? Nah, it's still yeah. very shallow. Hmm. So there could be more colors. There could be more colors. Yeah. But you seem to be working in very a and very I think no. what, what actually started to interest me in Iceland somehow was that they have this extremely clear water where there's almost endless visibility. That, uh, you know, this, when you dive down, you reach the 30 or 40 meters, it's, uh, there's only the blue color left. But in Iceland, you can actually study that phenomena on a horizontal way. That, that was very interesting for me. So I started like to work with that somehow, approach this phenomena. There's a whole series of these and I... Yeah, but this, this is like, uh, it's, it, it was part of the exhibition, uh, but at this time uh, I've, it's not in the... In, yeah. 
Maybe you should watch them here. I have to say, I didn't say it out loud before, but I quite like these pictures. It's um, You can buy them. I, oh, I can? Yeah, you've earned so much money on me, so... Oh, yeah. Let me right. totally have you bought a couple. I seem to remember that one of these costs the same as what you bought equipment for, so <clears throat> maybe I can get a discount <laughs> somehow. <clears throat> But, <clears throat> no, I would really like to go to the exhibition and see these in big, because yeah, I know you this, do a lot with print. I think these images is like kind of, uh, it's also this about diving, that you're weightless, that you're like drifting with the current. Or, so it's more like the shapes come to you somehow, instead of you are closing in on them. So in this series, I've like trying to, to like work with uh, the idea of a shape showing up and uh, you know, this I've been working with a photographer for 30 years now, so I can like compose anything in in a split second. But that's also kind of what I'm trying to fight somehow. That that uh, I'm very good at like organizing things in an image. So, so I tried like. Yeah, in this year to to like break it down into see what, what is it like meeting a form when is it defining itself? It's like more like a yeah an exercise somehow for myself to see. Um, I have a question here from Dan sitting in England saying, "What are you shooting with now?" Shooting with uh, now down there underwater. Yeah. Always shooting with the same, and I never change equipment. Uh, so it's all made with an uh, Canon. Uh, what do you call it? 5D Mark II. You have a 5D Mark II, yeah, in a yeah, yeah. foot housing with yeah. a 20 millimeter, 24 millimeter lens. Oh, yeah. yeah, but then I don't use the dome, so the 24 actually works like mm -hmm. something like a 30 millimeter or something around there. Mm. He's shooting with intuition, somebody's saying here. Hmm, yeah. Let's just run through these pictures again. I, I could imagine, you know, sometimes I'm thinking, what would I like to have on, on my bedroom wall when I got up in the morning? This is something I tell people when I do talks. I say, when I get up in the morning and it's winter, I'm tired and I have to start working. And when I open my eyes, if I were to have a major picture on my wall, for opening my day, what would I like to have there? And you once showed me. I actually went to your bedroom once. Um, promise not. I know. I promise not to tell anybody. But now I'm doing it anyway. And you had a picture that you'd made in four point four by three meters or something. It was something similar with the green ones we saw in the beginning. And it was just particles floating, a little bit the same mood as these ones here. We'll see some later. And I knew exactly what you meant. And I could just see this is what I would like to, you know, wake up every morning and be puzzled. Look at that image again and think new thoughts. Whereas if I had a picture of a fish or, or something that with eye contact, it would be something completely different. And, and I think that's when I really... Yeah, but I've, I've become very good at, at scaring the fish away when they show up. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I remember you saying once also that oh, I tell you don't, them I'll eat them for lunch. You don't take pictures of fish because they move. That's why you don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, I really I really enjoy these, and I could see these as posters. Um, oh, yeah. But I can't afford to buy them. No. That's that's true. Then you do actually, you did actually go to some warm places. Uh, I have some pictures here from the Canary Islands um, that you did. Let me open it here. Uh, a little bit different style, but still the stuff where you're working without. Well, maybe I shouldn't tell anyone what you're doing, but maybe you should tell people what this is. There we go. Yeah, but it's it's difficult just to talk. It's like also a series of pictures where 
it's like uh, it's the C that that changes the form. I'm trying again to like define a form, approach it, uh, but the waves keeps on. It's inside of uh, a cave where there's a hole on top, so like the waves are coming down in my head from above. It was very, very strange, and uh, I was like tumbling around, and uh, I didn't know what was up and what was down, and uh, I think so the images are shot like more or less uh, directly upwards. From beneath? From beneath. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's so another one here? Yeah. So it's like the same shape of light that comes through the, the air bubbles, and my own bubbles are coming up from beneath. And so, yeah, it was Do extremely you... fascinating. I just started to, like, playing this. What, what, what is this form? What is uh, What are they trying to tell me? And my son was my dive buddy, and after that dive, he just... He was shaking his head and said, "What the fuck are you doing? Are you trying to get us killed or what?" But uh, I was so fascinated about it, so I, I didn't uh, realize that I was like thrown into the sides of the cave. Hmm. Uh, uh, I have, yeah, a very nice theory of that. So just yeah, do you often take pictures in series? Um... Uh, yeah, oh. apparently I do. <laughs> I some, haven't some, really thought about it yet, but yeah. A, a photographer once told me that only good photographers can take a, a whole series and and with can make a series. Whereas anyone can make one good picture, but nobody can really do a whole series of pictures. <laughs> it's a bit of a statement. Anyway, just thought <laughs> I'd throw, throw it in here. So, what do you what do you think? Um, somebody's asking if that was in Tenerife, the pictures before. No, it was La Palma. La Palma. Yeah, just south of the airport. It's mm. a very small beach, and if you turn left when you dive out, you get to the cave. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people get their masks broken around there. Somebody says apparently, it's a guy who lives there. Okay. 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 Um, He's lucky he has a fantastic place just around his corner. Yeah. Okay, I think everybody that you realize that we do read the chat here while you're uh, watching this, so if you do have uh, questions, you might feel free to write them, and we will try to have my moderator here next door, next, next to me, trying to help us out if some interesting questions is popping up. So feel free to write them, and we will see if we can uh, do them. Um, with this, <laughs> when you told me about the exp exhibition here, I was actually puzzled because I thought you'd done it years ago. I thought you, I mean, I remember you not doing much for a couple of years, and then all of a sudden this comes out, and um, you said, "No, no, now I have enough pictures for my um, for my exhibition." And uh, you started telling me about the pictures, and you said there was a special project that you made, and uh, I have a couple of the pictures here. Uh, it's the one, uh, it was called uh, 1024. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe you can tell us about the background of them, and I will see if I can get the techniques working. And I'll start showing them. These I found very, very... First, I didn't understand anything of what you meant, and then I saw the pictures, and now I see... Maybe I understand what you mean, but try and explain it. There we go. <laughs> Here, here we are. Yeah. yeah. There we are. When I, when I started that, I didn't understand it at all myself either. But yeah. Okay. I just what? started some years ago when I was diving, uh, when I was descending in the Atlantic, just to to shoot out uh, in the water. Just I, I have a friend who's uh, coaching me and helping me. He's a, a philosopher, and we've been discussing uh, the substance of water a hell of a lot. And, uh, I don't remember if it it might have been him that suggested, but why don't you just uh, photograph the water? And, but there's there's nothing. So, but uh, 
then I started doing this, uh, just shooting out there in the blue. And uh, after some years, I had this collection uh, of like, say, four, five hundred of them. So uh, for this exhibition, I decided uh, that uh, it's like the tr story I'm trying to tell in the exhibition is like approaching color, uh, approaching the substance of the water somehow. So I decided uh, to, to make these constructed images after there was a German artist, uh, Gerhard Richter, who, who, who made some, uh, some images uh, in the beginning of the 70s, I think it was, where he painted uh, 1,024 uh, different colors in the same image. Uh, like random colors and I like this idea both about the colors but also about the randomness of it so I decided I took these uh, picked 25 out of the big collection I have of uh, images and I gave them to uh, three different people and I, I think you're hitting your microphone sorry sorry I, I, I gave those 25 same images to three different people and asked them to organize them as, as they would like to organize them. And I said, you can use uh, half a minute, you can use two days. I don't want to know what, why you're doing what you're doing. I've just uh, said, uh, if you do that, then I'll exhibit them. Uh, and I won't uh, ask you to change anything. That was like the deal we made. So I had uh, my philosopher to make one, I had my teenage daughter uh, to make one, and I had a, 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 like a person I know who not knows much about images or aesthetics to make one. So, so which one do you uh, like? To, uh, <laughs> oh, you know. I'm not, I'm, we my, shouldn't my, say this out loud. My, my daughter rules things in this house. So yeah, yeah, well. Of course, well. I like my daughter's best. Yeah, cool. <laughs> but cool. I won't tell you which one it is. No, no, exactly. I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Imagine I bought one and it was your daughter's and I thought it was... But, but look, there's a lot of fish. Can you see them? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of fish, yeah. You actually do take Never, them. ever, never say that I don't make images of fish again. No, true. There's hundreds of them. Actually, um, let's get back to what you just said, you, because this is one other thing that I do remember that really puzzled me when I heard you talking about talking those six years ago, what it was, that um, that you had two people who who uh, who you could co who coached you, who you went to when you had doubts or mm. when you wanted to talk images, um, and these two pictures, these two people are. Well, you better say it, because one of them was your one of them. You were doing some spreads for a book, and one of the people that you went to with your dive images to have them evaluated. One was a graphic designer who knew nothing about diving, and the other one was your philosopher. Mm. And that really puzzled me. You have a philosopher to comment on your dive pictures, and I bet he doesn't dive. No. He doesn't die. No. But he's interested in art and he's interested in photography. So, so whether it's <laughs> from from uh, down there or up here, it doesn't matter for him. Uh, so. So what does he do for you when you sh when you when 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 you um, discuss underwater images? I mean, it's not yeah, exactly the person I would show. Like, you, you have to understand that I've been a phot photographer for 30 years and uh, I have a huge amount of uh, like experience inside myself that uh, some ways of course it's uh, a force but in a lot of ways it's also my prison. Uh, I'm like a mental s super tanker that it takes me uh, half an hour and 30 miles to change direction just a little bit. So he likes, he like pushes me out on uh, on the deep water. You can say, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
uh, it's challenging me and uh, usually when I, we have had our discussions uh, I feel more insecure than when we started and, and more stupid also because uh, you always like if <laughs> like uh, looking for answers to your questions but uh, it's like like I told you when you I feel like uh, when you peel of the onion it just turns out uh, that there's more layers than when you started peeling the onion so so but so so he like to you know, he pushes me some steps in a direction uh, toward a more art approach to photography uh, and I uh, some days, so in some discussions, I I can feel that it's uh, the right thing for me to do, but I can still feel insecure about it because it's uh, I'm get, coming out of getting out of my comfort zone. It takes. It's taking you. It's taking you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, you can say that. Mm. But and uh, then I try to take some of it in to expand my, yeah, when we come to these images, uh, I'm trying to like expand my comfort zone all the time uh, to expand my own understanding of photography and images uh, and because when you're working with with water uh, things can become like <laughs> abstract. Uh, not I know, yeah. Not, not in the sense that the ones we see here, but uh, like if you are uh, like photographing just clear water, what is it you're actually photographing? Is it everything? Is it nothing? Is it uh, uh, you only have the blue color left, and the blue color is actually not really there? It's just a product of uh, the absorption of the other colors. So what the fuck are you working with? So it, it's, uh, and I think it's uh, it's very interesting for me to try to address these questions and try to move me towards them. But uh, but I'm yeah. But it always like opens more questions than yeah. Hmm. So even you with lots and lots and lots of experience and your mind of your own gets in doubt. <laughs> yeah, but uh, as I say, it's uh, uh, sometimes also it's like I'm, I'm not thinking when I'm diving, of course. I'm thinking before diving. I'm thinking after diving. When when I'm making an exhibition, it's uh, fantastic uh, uh, opportunity to, to make a status about where are you in your head. Where are you in your in your attitude, your uh, yeah understanding of photography, or what you think is your understanding of photography? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> uh, time is running fast here, uh, so uh, I just want to continue to listen. When I thought that uh, when I hadn't been speaking to you for when I hadn't heard from you in a couple of years because you hadn't bought any equipment for me. Oh. And then I thought you completely stopped taking pictures. But I could follow you on Facebook, and I realized you started getting into uh, something else. And I thought you completely left uh, the underwater world. Mm. And then you come out with uh, this new thing. And um, let me see if I can show everybody this picture only. Uh, here we go. Um, why? Wow, a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Why are you doing uh, that? That's from my workshop. Why are you not in a wetsuit? I, I have a workshop where I uh, I make a photography, which is actually it's a very very old uh, technique. I found out some uh, five six years ago that the world has just become uh, too digital for me. I never touched anything. I didn't get uh, like these images into myself the way I used to do in the dark room where they became mine because I worked physically with them. And then uh, 
uh, I could just feel that I had spent those years in the dark room that uh, I couldn't go back there. So I had to find something else. And then I had read about this process, which is a very seducing, very beautiful. It's a fantastic process. I love it very much. Uh, you work so with fantastic material. It's called gravure, right? Gravure, photo, photo gravure. Yeah, it's like it. Uh, yeah. And it's actually almost so as old as as photography. So you're printing your own images now. I mean, I can do that I'm in printing, print printing them. Yeah, it's like fine art in technical printing. Okay. Um, let's. A lot. And it's handmade and. I still have a few you can buy. True. Actually, <laughs> the funny thing, a good friend of mine um, picked up that you were doing this and realized you were doing courses in this, and he wanted us to go on a, on a course with you. Yeah. And I thought, uh, no way. And then I thought, why not? So we, I really do want to go. And, and let me just tell everybody, Steve's doing workshops in this. If you're three to four people, you can participate in this. And you can. I think that there's a video on Vimeo about yeah, I, I saw that video and it was it was really wonderful and it shows the process and you really get to work with your hands on this. Yeah. But Listen. the main, main thing, I don't think that it's it's going to solve all problems in the world. But for me, it was just important to to get back to touching uh, my images. Also, to get to, when you touch when I touch my images, I get back to this basic idea about what photography is, that it is images that I'm working with, that it's not it's not reality, it's I images that is adapted from reality. And that's important for me. Mm. I, I, uh, I see you work a lot with the images before, because of course you Photoshop them a lot, or you Lightroom them a lot. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes um, no rules for that. Sophus is just telling me a, a question is coming in. Uh, yeah, I know that I'm not showing it here. I'm almost there. There we go. Back to this image. Um, there we are. I think everybody can see it now. Um, and this is the image we had as introductory picture. And you, you. Yeah, that's uh, that's like. The Your start point from the exhibition I'm having on Friday. And this is Ian's old mask. Ian is the owner of Gulen Duke Center, which is yeah, 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 yeah. It was possibly like one of the better dive photography late. destinations. Yeah, it's a fantastic place um, in the northern hemisphere. But it, it's the mask that I do remember. But here you you worked a lot with it, so people can see how much you're working with your pictures. So did touching off stuff, touching up stuff digitally doesn't bother you? I mean, right now there's, I'm, <laughs> I promise not to get into this, but right now there's going a big thing on the internet with people complaining about the ethics of uh, photo competitions um, and whether you're able to touch things or move things or you can take uh, pictures uh, in. I really had to restrain myself from getting into this because I don't think any good would come out of me getting into that. but. Where are you in this? I mean, do you see the idea of a photo competition at all? Can can I stay out of that also, <laughs> please? <laughs> no, you're the guest. You have to answer. Uh, I think uh, I don't think that uh, photography or storytelling is a competition. So to say it short, no. I think. Uh, the problem, if you can say there's a problem, is always that there's a lot of uh, like rules and restrictions about what you are allowed to do, and and uh, some of it doesn't really make sense in my head because uh, it's images I'm working with; it's not reality I'm working with. So I cannot see it. I, 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 there's a lot of points I don't get, like uh, for instance. Uh, uh, the, uh, I can reveal it as the, the big secret of when you're showing this one that there has never been a black and white world out there. No. So, so it's one of the 
I have a, a, a friend and colleague who, who always says, well, what, what, what if color photography had been invented first, then black and white would have been the cheap trick. Uh, it, the, yeah. That's a caviar. Well, any, any, let me just say, any of the viewers are very welcome to comment on this. Uh, <laughs> don't get too fussy on the chat, but uh, it's it's an interesting area that I wanted to 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 you to to talk about. But let's see some of the gravure shots that you've done here. Yeah, yeah. But you can say again that the original image is of, it's a digital uh, color uh, file. Uh, with a, a, a blue jellyfish mixed up with a red jellyfish, and they're like trying to get away from each other, and uh, absolutely not intelligent enough to 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 find out how to do that. But for me, they were like making it dance uh, in the water. That was so beautiful. I've I've seen them, of course, filtered together, lying at the bottom, but I'd never seen it like in open sea before. So. I followed this dance as long as my dive body allowed me to. He thought it was boring, but I thought it was so uh, poetic, fantastic. And but when when I saw those files on my screen, I said, "Well, uh, it's nice images, but uh, but they were not like telling uh, what I wanted them to." So I had to like break them down and in, in, in the computer uh, first I inverted them uh, so they're actually negative uh, I turned them upside down uh, I made my printing plates and I printed them and I, they didn't come out the way I wanted so I went all the way back to Photoshop and worked a lot with uh, like uh, the contrasts in small parts of the images and New plates, not satisfied, all the way back. So, and then, but in the end, I got. Uh, it's hard to see them, like here on the screen. I think they're they're very as printed, hand printed reviews. They're like. Well, crazy. people can go to Copenhagen and see them. Right, the exhibition is open for a month. Yeah, but they're not at the exhibition either. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what are we doing here? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh. but uh, yeah, but I, <clears throat> I still uh, like them very much. Yeah, uh, maybe I should reveal to you that actually I, uh, most of the uh, underwater uh, photographers I've seen are fascinated by jellyfish, and they yeah. do images in all sorts because they do dance, because they are special, because they. Do yeah. have weird colors and they react weird yeah. to light, but you completely took them out of the context. You can't even see it's in water here. Yeah. Um, quite interesting. Uh, next one's here. What do we see? Oh, yeah, but you know, that's again back to this story about expecting something. It's from no Northern Iceland and out in the open sea where. Uh, we were like looking for a whale graveyard, I think it was at the time, and, but we didn't find anything that looked like even a fishbone. So at the end of the dive, uh, we were like split up because the visibility was not very well. So I came up where there was a stream, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, small Current. small yeah. river just uh, falling down in, in the sea. And uh, it made like this turbulent uh, movements in the seaweed. So, uh, so at the time I was like trying to get my fins off. <laughs> at the same time, I started photographing with the other hand. And yeah, that's from another story. But but uh, just like. Working uh, with the sea, with uh, moving the camera in, in uh, the sea, trying to to find the rhythm and the movements of the seaweed, and uh, on some quite long exposure times. So, I don't know. I just got fascinated and I tried to. It was also like blurred from this fresh water falling into the salt seawater and. 
it's like just a moment of magic somehow where uh, actually nothing was happening. Is this? On, is but, this but I was I was just like lucky, uh, feeling happy. <laughs> Yeah. So why is there the crossover? Is that because it's printed in four and hung up? Yeah, like yeah. It started like a little bit like uh, because my etching press, uh, of course, uh, it has a maximum size it can uh, it can print. So I had to, I w and I wanted to go up size, so I had to divide it, and then it became a little bit of style. This one is made of. Nine, so I think it. Uh, so when it's ex exhibited, there are nine different images hanging next to each other. Uh, no, they're in the same frame. But it's nine but, images but in the, the same frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's nine parts of the same image. I know, but it's image, it's there. The there are nine separate pieces of. Yeah, nine gravure prints. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Because a guy asked why these white lines was like in there. Another one said is uh, if um, if you're shooting digital now, that's Dan again from England. If you're shooting digital now, as f as a fine art photographer, do you still use film? Uh, actually, I just recently started shooting on film again. Yeah. Uh, Weirdo. Weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see some more images. What uh, is this? Uh, that's cool again. That's cool. Ayan's place is outside his house reef. I'm not sure he would see this as an optimal picture of his uh, nice no. house reef. No, probably not. But but that's there's a wall. If you dive to the right, there's like a, a very steep wall. Where yeah, I remember. Yeah. What is that? Like 60 meters down or something like that. Mm. And there's like an overhang. Uh, so if you go in under an overhang of seaweed and stuff, so when your bubbles gets up through the the overhang, then uh, this uh, starfish and stuff they start falling down. This I actually have uh, on video. I know exactly what you mean. But this is four yeah, different yeah, images. So, being so, so it's, yeah, but I've, it's four four different images that I made this like star. Sky, what they call it, yeah, starry mm. night out of it, and I, I haven't still found out how to 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 make it. I haven't used it yet, but I'm still working on trying to break the code. <coughs> Sorry, we can try if they fit to my bedroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now comes the section that I've been looking forward to. These are uh, Silfra, <coughs> Silfra Iceland, Silfra Iceland, yeah. Okay, what are they? Do they have a name? It's a series again, a series of... What, yeah, but it's pictures. still the same story again, like trying to approach a form, uh, trying, yeah, to, yeah. Silfra is a very difficult place to, to photograph. It's so intensely beautiful. It's like diving in a 200 meter long postcard. I know exactly what it looks like, and I know exactly that every so, single so, this, so uh, every the, single the, 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 uh, that like doing the same thing in whipped cream of aesthetics. <laughs> so, so, so this uh, it's a big problem for me, like to to break it down and build it up again as my own. Uh, but but it's uh, always an. For, Fantastic experience to, to, to dive that dive. It's like the Eiffel Tower of Nordic diving after these days, I guess. Um, here they are again. Mm. So actually, we passed the nine o'clock mark, which is yeah. I expected to be an hour, but uh, told That's people right. that actually it could be one and a half. But let's not uh, overwhelm people with this. Uh, there's a question. Somebody's coming in Copenhagen on Thursday. Uh, any chance to see your exhibition? No, it opens at Friday. Whether yeah. you're, um, yeah, there will be. There's an email with with a, an address at some point. I think it's somewhere. Yeah. Um, let's let's just uh, look at these last ones. 
underwater picture as well, I assume, or Kodio, or... Yeah. But, uh, uh, Silfra? No, it's a small crack, uh, another place in Iceland, but, uh, yeah. And that's also, it's photography also, but in two colors, so this idea about it. Approaching the light, I think uh, hopefully when we edit the exhibition, it will give meaning that I'm going down and ending out in these color uh, Richter 25 ones in the end. So hmm. uh, I want to end with these three. I'm just going to show them um, fairly yeah. quick. Uh, yeah. Those are iconic images. I think they're taken on what? Where are they taken? In, is it underwater? Yeah, but that's uh, now it's getting really weird. It's underwater, yeah. Uh, but uh, I think what I'm trying, uh, have been trying to explain is this, you know, this amount of experience that it's sometimes difficult for me also to to break down my own understanding of photography that I organize nice things. Uh, too too much too too good. So uh, one day I decided, uh, you know, if you see the surface from above, then it's uh, very often like a mirror. You cannot see what is going on down there. So I decided to uh, one day to like let the camera and the water work together. So I put, <laughs> I took my underwater camera and put on a boomstick <laughs> and just uh, I was not diving I was at the harbor so I just uh, put this uh, boomstick uh, down and I could see it was with the small, small compact camera camera then then when it flashed down there the camera I could see uh, I turned on the flash then I knew it had taken a photo so this is this is like a it's a pole and a, and a compact yeah. camera. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, they are called like the pole shots, uh, mm. <laughs> the fold in, in my computer. And there's, there's uh, one more here. So, so it's like <laughs> yeah, working towards this kind of uh, randomness that what, what happens uh, if I'm not totally not aware of what the camera is seeing. But then, uh, of course, the problems uh, came to me afterwards. Then, how should I edit them? Which one should I choose? So, and then you start to like thinking in aesthetics again, and images again, the traditional way. This is actually very beautiful, very traditional. But again, do you think it's traditional? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, am I? No, yeah. But but mm. again, this is. Uh, in reality, maybe it's upside down, and uh, but mm. yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, actually, we're through. Uh, I can see there's not a lot of comments and uh, questions coming in again. Um, we promised people they could ask questions afterwards. I think they just done it during the. Um, during the, the, the presentation, uh, we had a lot of comments here. Um, is there anyone else who has a couple of questions on the here before we let in? Are these the negatives? I think they're done digitally. Which one? The last ones should be. The last yeah, one. But, but like. Yeah, but they are inverted into negative. That's yeah. Mm, yeah. So they look like. Old black and white negatives, yeah. Yeah, but they're career printed, so yeah. Ah, oh, there, yeah. I I have to go and do that course soon. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anyone else, guys? Any other who have some questions? Listen, we promised uh, people that there was going to be um, an offer here, um, an offer uh, of something, you know, not a lot we can sell. I mean, it's 2,000 euros for one of the large images. You're going to sell them for cheap today, right? No, well. <laughs> um, we did actually make an offer. Um, 
we decided to make uh, your first, very first underwater shot, the stuff, the, the shot that started everything, the shot that you made in Mallorca. Mm. Um, we decided to make that available for people. Um, I think it's out. Is it live? So, is that a yes? I think so, yes. Yeah. Can, Can you, can you see it? it? It's the very first image that you did. We showed it earlier. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna print these yourself. Uh, can you say hand print? They're gonna, not gonna be gravure printed. They're gonna be traditionally printed. But you want to print these and um, mm. make them available, so you can actually go and buy these uh, today. It's gonna be open for another three hours, I think. Maybe till tomorrow. Whoops, I'm back. Am I back? I think I'm back. This was a uh, Google spam field that we started selling something, and uh, <laughs> we were we were locked out. Um, I don't know. I can't really see. And I guess that's the beauty of uh, the digital world. Are we in? Steve, are you there? No. Yes. Well, we didn't need him anymore, did we? Um, okay. I think I will just send out an email from Steve can afterwards. You hear me now? Oh, yeah, I can hear him now. Just for love. Yeah. Was that your Was that your daughter? <laughs> <laughs> this was, was not you, the it was, you, it was definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. I can. I now get the opportunity to get you back online. Here it should be coming. You should be coming up here. Excellent. That was funny. Anyway, we needed to have this here in the first webinar, didn't we? Okay. Oh, hey, anyway, uh, I think that's it. I think we had the questions uh, that are in. 60, that's the 69 euros, sticky, right? Yeah. Great, excellent. Thanks, guys, for doing the chats out there. Uh, Steve, thanks a lot for doing this. I really, really, really appreciate you taking time for this, and I wish you luck with your uh, exhibition um, starting you. on Friday, one month out. Going to be in uh, Copenhagen, Kultowl, right? Kultbyen. Kultbyen. The meatpacking district. Yeah, and uh, don't worry, we'll make sure that everybody gets sent the offer afterwards and gets sent the um, gets sent the uh, address for the exhibition in case they should be in Copenhagen. So, uh, Steve, thanks a lot. I will be talking to you soon, uh, if not over, then underwater. So, uh, thanks. thanks. Checking out. Um, and if I can even find the button, it would be this one. There we go. Yep. And I'm I'm back here and <laughs> that's a lot of buttons here. Okay, I think I'm coming online now. Okay, there are, we are and I still see there's lots of people uh, following us, so I guess I will... Um, Say so thank you for uh, watching this. Uh, it's really been uh, interesting for us to do this. Um, very exciting. We didn't know if anybody was going to show up, and I have to say that our expectations are totally, totally uh, blown away. We uh, are overwhelmed with this. So let me tell you that if you uh, would like to have any subject taken up by us here at Photograph It, any testing of something special equipment, the person that we need to interview, or something else, then we're more than happy to look into it. You're more than welcome to send us an email, and we will we will try to set up. It takes a lot of time to organize stuff like this. We're very happy to do that in order to get out and get in touch with you guys out there. Uh, also, anything equipment related, underwater photography equipment related, send us an email. You saw the website earlier. Uh, that's what we do for a living, uh, so please don't hesitate to drop us an email. And uh, anyway, if you have some interesting pictures that you've taken, be aware that we do have a um, Facebook group. And we are very pleased when people um, upload pictures there. If you write a question, what do you like uh, 
about this picture? What do you think about this picture? Uh, we always reply on this. And it's you know we sit here in the office, and it's something that really pleases us. That's when when you guys get back to us with stuff you've done or pictures you've taken or questions some stuff that is happening out there. So we hope to be able to take time to to all of you. Uh, I will thank you, Sophus, sitting over here, and uh, wish you all a good night. And um, until next time, uh, photograph it, large checking out. Thanks, guys. See you soon. <laughs>